morning, folks. What's going on? It's the Earthmaster here on this Wednesday morning. Uh, actually, afternoon now, January 18th, 2023. It's about 12.42 p.m. California time. Kind of feels like morning out here. we got some clouds coming in. Pretty cold and a little bit more rain coming into Northern California here today. Uh, and then after that, we really dry out. Latest earthquake shows a 0.9 very small microquake into the area of California. Uh, now we did see some activity kind of ramping up on the interior portion of the North American plate, uh, including some activity way up in the Northwest Territories, Canada region with a 4.1 earthquake that's coming in way up here. Um, let's see what we got here. It looks like about seven kilometers deep for this 4.1 uh, being reported about uh, 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, also, some activity kicking up here in the Yellowstone down south here into Wyoming in the States. A 2.0 coming in at about 6.6 .6 kilometers deep. Now, the Yellowstone overview map here shows a little bit of activity kind of kicking up here within the last hour or so. Uh, there is the two-pointer that kicked up. Surprised the USGS actually shown that, but uh, either way, pretty cool. A little bit of small microquake activity overnight. Uh, no major swarming kicking up here currently, just that small uh, activity there. Confined mostly to the uh, northwest corner of the park. Pacific Northwest, pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on. Uh, Northern California, about the same. Really haven't seen too much uptick in movement. Uh, did notice a little bit of activity kicking up here around the uh, creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. It looks like that's all below 2.5. A little, little bit of swarming out here around Kalinga uh, overnight and this morning time period. Uh, further down south into Southern California, a little cluster of activity around the Desert Hot Springs region and uh, right off the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault at 1.7 coming in to the area. Uh, no major movement to take note of out here along the west coast currently. Uh, well inland into the Texas and Oklahoma area. These guys have been kind of rocking and rolling a little bit overnight. A couple twos out there in Texas. Also over here in Oklahoma, a lot of the oil pumping operations and wastewater disposal facilities have been getting hit uh, with earthquake activity over the last 24 hours here. Quite a few twos out there scattered out and about. Now over here in South Carolina, um, outside of the, uh, let's see where we're at exactly, Somerville area. Just to the west, northwest of Charleston, this area has seen a 1.4 coming in. Now, this area does see uh, some large earthquake activity on occasion. It's right smack dab in the major hazard seismic zone that the USGS has put out here. Um, that's where that 1.4 struck. This area can see some uh, rather large quakes. Uh, I believe... Um, what was it, a seven pointer? Uh, let's go ahead and just do a little quick history on it. We'll go ahead and search out the earthquake catalog book and we're just going to go, uh, we'll do 5.5 and above and we'll go back go to the year, how about 1000? Probably not going <laughs> to matter that much. Uh, draw a rectangle on the map and we're going to go over here around the South Carolina region and see uh, what's going on specifically just within this area. Uh, where the USGS has this marked. Go ahead and check this out. And we're going to go search the catalog book. And there was the seven pointer back in 1886. I knew it was somewhere around the seven pointer. A um, little bit of activity uh, there today in that specific region. Just a two pointer. Nothing big, but uh, obviously this area can see some large earthquake activity out there. A 7.0 right now in today's time frame. With the uh, massive amount of population density out here would not be good. But uh, yeah, that 7.0 struck 1886. Uh, back in August, it looks like. A pretty large earthquake back in that time frame. And one day, potentially, that could come up again. Just uh, a matter of time. For now, a 1.4 into that region. Further down south, a relatively calm across the Caribbean plate. Puerto Rico has backed out tremendously on earthquake activity. Only six being reported today here across the area. South America, absent of earthquake activity. Nothing showing up here on the map. And that's, uh, let's check out the smaller quakes, see if we're 
uh, in agreement with that as well. Yeah, nothing. Look at that. Not even some smaller microquakes kicking up here uh, into this area. Nothing. Zip zero. That's rather strange. Of course, all of that uh, quietness comes after yesterday's large activity kicking up here around the Maluka Sea, south of the uh, Philippines. We did see a 6.0 early yesterday, and uh, that was followed up here by some further activity up north with that 7.0. Originally came in as a 7.2. Looks like that was downgraded here to a 7.0. Uh, now we have seen a little series of aftershocks. Nothing big so far. Uh, quite a few fours, including a 5.5, a the largest so far in this region. Uh, we'll continue to watch that and see how this progresses uh, in terms of uh, any possible further activity in the region. And of course, the latest in this area, 4.6 with that aftershock movement. Um, down here into the Java Trench, a little bit of activity back building here prior onto the, uh, uh, just prior to the plate boundary. It looks like this activity coming in this morning time period, about eight o'clock, couple fives. Still haven't really seen any major westward pressure movement here around the plate boundaries. Kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, I think until that happens, we need to watch areas back behind all of this activity. That includes uh, Mariana Trench, Japan, and areas back over here along the, um, uh, well, about the Kermadec Trench, Tonga Trench area. And speaking of those regions, we did see a 4.5 coming in early this morning, 228 kilometers deep into the Tonga Trench region. Uh, a little bit of activity as well this morning into the Kermadec Trench. But this one here looks like it's just shy of the subduction zone uh, interface level here. 10 kilometer defaulted depth, but again, location shows it uh, prior to the uh, subduction zone levels. Might be a, that might be a spot where we could be seeing something release here soon. Keep an eye on that. Um, the rest of New Zealand, a look at the GeoNet servers here on the globe. Looks like there's been some threes out here. Most of this, um, here's a 4.8 over here. Looks like just outside of the Fiji area. That's going to be this one right here, not showing up on the USGS map. So uh, definitely looks like there's some in, oh, <laughs> kind of spoke that into existence goodness <laughs> oh, I love the when that happens but unfortunately it doesn't happen when I try to pick out lotto numbers I always get the opposite effect all right 4.8 coming in Fiji area 10 kilometers deep here the latest quake in this region big island Hawaii not a whole lot going on uh, mostly activity around Pahala and the continued eruption here of Kilauea volcano up north into Alaska, things are um, about the same as they were yesterday and uh, last night. No major uptick in movement across the area. And uh, let's see what we got. The Indian Ocean out here, we did see a 5.0, about 3 o'clock in the morning. Out here on these uh, Argo, it looks like the Argo Fracture Zone couple different fracture zones out here kind of like a zipper if you will that's pretty much what it is uh, western areas over here let's see 5.8 turkey iran border that one a new earthquake um looks like about two o'clock this morning coming in uh, since then a couple earthquakes aftershock 4.4 and then some further activity westward near the mediterranean sea of 5.1 coming in and also a 4.7 into that area. The Atlantic Ocean looks pretty calm and clear. Not a whole lot popping off currently with that uh, region of the plates. Now, space weather activity looks like we're getting a little flare coming in here. Uh, so far, reaching up into the M category. Low grade M flare, it looks like. Upper C flare potentially it hasn't really crossed that threshold, but uh, it's getting there. And it, it looks like, let's see where this is coming from just coming in so it takes a little bit for this to update maybe another minute or two uh, and then we can spot the source of where this is coming from because these kind of brighten up a little bit but um let me see what we have here for the latest magnetic uh, image this massive sunspot is directly uh facing earth and uh will be geo effective any if anything should pop off from here 
Uh, we got a, just a huge amount of sunspots currently facing the earth right now. And some of these are still fairly complex and looking um, somewhat unstable. A couple new developing sunspots along that sunspot train uh, over here on the southeastern limb, fairly quiet. Uh, looks like, uh, let's see what we got for current threat level. 15% chance still for the uh, X flare, 60 for M flare, 99% certainty for a C flare. A proton event there elevated at about 15% chance uh, due to all these earth facing uh, sunspots. SFI today, uh, 222 it looks like. That's going to be the uh, uh, solar flux activity. Uh, let's see, 3190. It looks like they still only have 3190 as the most complex area harboring a beta gamma class. Now that, of course, all these are subject to change should they develop and rapidly intensify. But uh, I'm kind of curious to see where that one's at, this uh, most recent image. I think it updates like maybe every five minutes or something like that, but uh, I'll have to look at it here. I, if I had to guess from one of these sunspots, it's probably from this Earth-directed Earth directed sunspot down here, 3190, most likely source of that current flare that's coming in. Uh, it is creating a little bit of radio blackout on the sunlit side here of the Earth, and that's going to be uh, a little South Pacific Ocean area. Current looks like C82, but then again, oh, it looks like it yeah, kind of peaked out there. At a C9.4, it is starting to go down. But uh, activity there, kind of uh, just... We're watching it. It's very close to, um, I think, producing something significant. There's a lot of sunspots here. They're massive. And, uh, you know, now would be the time. If they want to pop off any major flares, it would all be Earth-directed. All right, let's see. Um, this update was put out a couple days ago. Nothing new on their uh, commentary. Current conditions here shows relatively calm conditions on the solar wind chart. Density uh, lowered, speed lowered, and the BTBZ component here with the uh, interplanetary magnetic field is stable. Uh, and that will create calm conditions as far as any auroras go. Not a whole lot of potential there currently. All right, folks, um, have a good day. Again, a little bit of rain coming in here to Northern California. Just a really quick shot of some, uh, yeah, maybe some light to moderate rain here in Northern California. Uh, later this afternoon some snow in the elevation higher elevations here it's a fairly cold but fairly dry system coming into northern cal and uh, behind that nothing but uh, clear skies not a whole lot of potential for rainfall maybe it looks like and we keep watching this maybe the first week of february that uh, storm door potentially could open again uh, but these are still some cold storms coming down from the northwest uh, nothing like we had seen earlier this month where we had that general pattern from the southwest bringing up uh, warmer, moist storms uh, that brought all the rainfall here in California. So continue to watch it, see how it plays out. Hope everyone has a good day. And uh, we'll chat you guys again a little bit later on tonight uh, for the uh, nightly update. Take care, folks.